Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to be balancing uh, electrochemical reactions via half reaction, which is awesome. So basically we're ba balancing redox reactions in a different way, in a new and exciting way. So let's do that. It really depends. I'm giving you one of each acidic and basic. Um, each of these has basically the same process. Basic has one more thing you got to do. So let's do both of them, okay? So acidic, when you have an, something in an acidic solution, okay, your process is uh, always the same, okay? First thing is you have to separate out the, rea the half reactions, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to look for elements that are the same on both sides of the arrows that are not H or O. So, for instance, here, I have S, and that would be what we call our major element here. And then I have N. I have two. I have a reactant and a product with N and a reactant and a product with S. So the S's go with one reaction. The N's go with another. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is separate into half reactions based off of the major element. So here we go, we got S, looks like fun, and then we have N, nitrogen. Doesn't that look like fun? Good stuff. The next thing we're going to do, and I'm going to do these in different colors so that you get some comparison here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to balance everything other than O and H. So balance everything other than oxygen and hydrogen. Okay, that means the same major element that you separated the half reactions, uh, that you based the separation of the half reactions on, needs to be balanced. It needs to be the same on both sides. So we're going to do that. All right, so here we have S8. And then I have eight on this side of S and one on that side. So I need an eight in front of that SO3 two minus, okay? And I have one of each of these ends on either side. So that is already balanced for everything other than O and H to begin with. Okay, next thing you're gonna do, let's do blue for this one. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to balance O's and then balance H's. First, we balance O's. And the way we balance O's is we use water, OK? So what we do is we add waters to the opposite side of the equation from where the O's are in order to balance things out. Okay, from the larger number of O's, I should say. So, for instance, here, there are no O's on this side. There are 24 O's on this side, which means I need to add waters to this side. And how many of them do I need to add? Well, since there's only one O per water, I need to add 24 of them. Okay, so I get 24 waters plus S8. Boy, that is a squeaky... Squeaky! I am sorry. It's a little obnoxious for me, and I've had coffee. All right, so in terms of that, now I have the same number of O's on either side of this balanced, uh, of my balancing process, okay? Here I have three O's, and here I have one O. So I need to add two waters, and I need to add it to the lesser, the side with the lesser O's with the smaller number of O's. So NO3 minus NO plus two waters. Okay, now I'm going to balance H's. And you balance H's using H pluses. Okay, so how am I going to do this? I'm going to now add H's to the opposite side, H, these H pluses to the opposite side 
of the side that has more H's on it. A little bit confusing, but you're going to get the process. All right, so here, I have no H's on this side. I have, sorry. <laughs> I said that exactly backwards. There's like a whole number of H's on this side. There's none on this side. Okay, good. So there's 48 H's on this side, no H's on this side. So how many H pluses do I need and on which side? I need 48 H pluses on that side. All right, let's write that out. 24 H2O's plus S8 gives me 8 SO3 2 minuses plus 48 H pluses. Whew, that's a lot of H pluses. All right. On this one, I have no H's on this side, but I have four on this side, so I need to add four H pluses to the reactant side of this half reaction. Woo! There we go. Awesome. Okay, now the last step of the acidic reaction. Okay, so I'm going to erase the top here because I want I want to be able to keep my bottom half here because that's where my balanced chemical equation is from where I, what I have. All right. So what's going on at this point? The last thing you do once you've done all of this work. Actually, this isn't the last. This is the last thing before you add these together. So <laughs> there's some steps still left. All right, the last thing for the moment is that you are going to charge balance both sides. And how are you going to, of the half reaction? How are you going to charge balance both sides of the half reaction? You're going to add in electrons. This is a half reaction for a redox reaction, right? So let's do that. And let's do it with maybe orange. Orange. I mean, used a lot of orange today. That's kind of exciting. All right, so balance. Overall charge of the each half reaction using electrons. Okay, so what do I have here? I have 24 H2Os plus S8. On this side, I have no charge whatsoever, right? But on this side, I got a lot of charge. So let's figure out what this is, right? I have essentially 8 times negative 2, which gives me a charge, by the way, of minus 16, right? And then I have 48 times plus 1, which is plus 48. So. What do we got here? We got an overall charge of plus 32, right? Seems right. Negative 16 plus 48 gives me plus 32. Okay, where am I going to add the electrons there? I need to add the electrons to the more positive side. Okay, if this is overall zero because water doesn't have a charge and S8 doesn't have a charge. But this side is plus 32, then I need to add electrons, which are minuses, to the more positive side. And how many electrons am I going to add? Well, however many electrons that will give me the same charge on both sides, which is 32. 32 electrons I'm adding to that side. Whoo, that's a lot of electrons. All right, let's do the same for this side. On this one, I have 4 times plus 1, plus 1, plus minus 1, right? 1 minus, which gives me an overall charge of plus 3. And on this side, there's no charge at all. So what do I need to add here? I need to add 3, three electrons to the more positive side. So I need to add to this side plus three electrons. All 
All right, having said all of this, before I add these two together, my last step is that I have to make the same number of electrons on both sides. This is going to be so interesting. OK. So in other words, what I can say now is I can say which half reaction was oxidized and which one was reduced. And I can say that they need to have the same number of overall electrons. And unfortunately, I'm pretty sure 32 is not divisible by 3. So we're going to be multiplying both reactions. Whew, this is going to be fun. Fun stuff. It'll be a ridiculously large balance equation in the end. All right, here we go. So, OK. What I can say now is I can say that if you give off electrons as if they're products, that makes this an oxidation. This is the oxidation half reaction. When you react electrons, in other words, have it on the reactant side, then you have gained electrons, and that is a reduction. Interesting, huh? Whole different way to label reduction and oxidation. But like I said, we need to make these two match. These two numbers has, have to be exactly the same when I add them together. So that means I'm going to have to multiply both reactions by some number. And let's just go ahead and do the easiest way to go here. Let's multiply this entire reaction times 3. And let's multiply this entire reaction by 32. And that'll definitely have a least common denominator. Be there probably is a least common denominator between all of those. But I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to multiply this reaction by this number of electrons and this entire reaction by that number of electrons. OK? 24 times 3 is 72. This is getting into math that I don't know off the top of my head. Plus 3s8 plus 24so3 2 minus plus 48 times 3, 144h pluses plus 32 times 3 is 96 electrons. Wow. All right. I'm going to multiply this entire reaction by 32. So this is going to be not three electrons anymore. It's going to be 96 electrons, just like it was over there. All right. 96 electrons. Woohoo! 32 times 4 is 128 H pluses. Wow, that's a lot of H pluses. Plus 32 NO3s gives me 32 NOs. Plus 32 times 2 is 64, I hope. <laughs> Maybe I can do that one in my head. All right. So now that I have the same number of electrons on both sides, I can add these together and I can cancel those out. Okay, so, woo! And when I add these together, what I'm doing is I am writing out all the reactants on one side and all the products on the other side. And so if you can't see me canceling that out to begin with, let me go ahead and write it in and I'll show you exactly what happens. So there's my top equation. Let's go ahead and write in this 96 electrons just in case you didn't see me, see the ability to cancel it out by what I just did. Ooh, another squeaky marker. This is what I live for, folks. Squeaky markers. Let's see if I can get, make that better. All right. Oh, the beauty of non-squeaky markers. All right, plus 144, H plus. Plus now, oh, I'll do the 96 electrons plus 32 NOs. Can you guys see that? You can't see that. All right, great. Plus 64 H2Os. Does that make sense? Did I get everything? 24 SO3s, 144, 96. That looks right. This, 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 this. Great. Everything looks fabulous. OK, so now at this point, 
what you're doing is you are crossing out everything that looks exactly the same on both sides. So that's how my 96 electrons can be crossed out again. And you can cross out certain amounts of like things that look the same on both sides but may not have the same amount of each thing. So for instance, H pluses exist on both sides. These are different numbers in front of them, but I can at least cross out 128 on this side and take from 144, 128 to find out how many I have left, right? So 128 goes away on that side. 144 minus 128 is 16. So this is no longer going to be 144. It's going to be 16. Okay. Same thing goes for the waters. Waters look exactly the same on both sides, but they don't have the same number in front of them. So since this is the smaller of the numbers, I can cross that totally out. And then I can take from 72, 64 of the ones that I crossed out over there, which makes this no longer 72, but 8. Okay. Is that everything I can cross out? Looks like it. So my final equation in all of its glory is going to be 8 H2Os plus 3 S8s plus 32 NO3 minuses gives me 24 SO3 2 minuses plus 16 H pluses plus 32 NOs. This equation, folks, still has to have everything true about it that we did in the process as well. So in other words, it still has to be charged balanced. It still has to have the same number of H's on either side, the same number of O's, the same number of S's, the same number of N's. So let's double check it for a minute here. I have 16 H's. I have 16 H's. Fabulous. I have 8 plus oh, 96. 8 plus 96 is 104 O's. And I need 104 O's. So 24 times 3 plus 32 gives me 104 O's. Okay, O's are good. Then I need um, 24 S's and 24 S's and 32 N's and 32 N's. Charge balance it. I have 32 minuses on this side, right? So these are both neutral. 32 times 1 is 32. And I have 24 times minus 2 times minus 2 is negative 48 plus 16 times 1 plus 1 is 48 minus 16. That's negative 32. Negative 32 and negative 32. Whew! That's a lot of work for just one equation. But that's how it goes. And next time we'll do the basic reaction and show you how it's different. Until then, adieu.